My name is Beverly Ketchon. I work at Mississippi State University in the Department of Entomology. I work uh, in the insect rearing facility here on campus. And today I'd like to talk to you about uh, two insects in particular. One is the tarnished plant bug, that's the common name, and its scientific name is Ligus linealaris. Um, the tarnished plant bug is uh, a hemipteran. It's in the hemiptera uh, order and the Myridae family. Plant bugs have piercing and sucking mouth parts and they are polyphagous. And what polyphagous means are polyphagous. Some people pronounce it that way. It means that they feed on a lot of different plant species. And this particular pest, the tarnished plant bug, it feeds on over 700 different plant species. So it feeds on a lot of fruits and vegetables. It feeds on some trees, certain types of trees. It also feeds on road crops, things like uh, cotton, corn, or soybeans. And so for uh, the Mid-South area, and especially in Mississippi, the tarnished plant bug is the most economically important pest of cotton. And so economically, when you say that, we're talking about economics or money. So it costs our, uh, cotton farmers or producers a lot of money to control this one particular pest. So we use a sweet net and we go out and we collect these off of weeds or flowers, things that they're feeding on, and we bring them back into the lab here at Mississippi State. Other people have conducted research and they have um, developed an artificial diet or food that these insects can grow on inside the lab. And so our purpose for the insect um, rearing facility here is to rear these uh, tarnished plant bugs so that other people can study them and what they feed on and hopefully come up with a more economically important way to control this pest for our farmers. The second um, pest that I'm gonna talk to you about is in the order of Lepidoptera and this is where our moths and our butterflies, they're in that order. Um, the, pest, the pest that you're going to look at today um, will be the corn earworm. That's its common name. And the scientific name for that is Helicoverpa zaya. Now, one thing that's interesting about this pest, it is a moth. Um, but depending on which crop or food source that they're feeding on, they have a different common name. So, for example, my name is Beverly Ketchot. Okay. Some people call me Bev, somebody call, you know, some people call me Aunt B, some people call me uh, Miss Bev, and so I have different common names depending on who, you know, is talking to me. So with this particular pest, when we are talking about um, the corn earworm, of course it feeds on corn ears, okay? If we call it the bowl worm, it's feeding on cotton bowls, okay? It also feeds on soybeans, and so it's called the soybean um, soybean podworm. So this particular pest is also important for our crop production and is extremely important for cotton producers. So today you're going to hear about these two pests, the uh, tarnished plant bugs as well as the corn earworm or the boll worm and you're going to learn um, about ways that they feed and how we can continue to rear those for uh, research purposes. Thank you, I hope you enjoy it. And all of these are egg, um, they're eggs. And when they hatch out, these are the one day old. And you can actually see those moving pretty good. Then we put them in a quart jar. And within one to two days, they will start to hatch out. And they're, it's, I usually describe this as probably about a half, uh, the size of about a half a grain of pepper, if you were to use that at home. But we use paint brushes because these are these neonates are the one day old babies. They um, are very delicate, and so we usually use a paintbrush and we'll pick one and put it on the diet, and then it will feed from there. Day one. So when the eggs hatch, they're called neonates, the one day old. Uh, babies or larvae or nymphs is another term that we use for immature insects um, and we use a paintbrush because they're very delicate and put them on the diet and those would be a five day old so you can tell 
Wow. Uh, it has grown a good bit, but I will say that they generally do not eat very much as they are growing until they get to the last instar or uh, the oldest part of them considered a you know maybe a child um, and they eat 90 percent of their diet within that last stage and so uh, it takes them a while when they're first um, when they first hatch out to grow but we'll continue we'll look at some other they're about eight days old now maybe ten and you'll notice in there now you see more than just food so one thing that's kind of nasty they eat and poop and for insects we call their poop uh, grass but that is um, they're living in there so just like for you at home maybe you know, when you go to the bathroom, you eat food, you have to go, well, the insects, they do that in one cup. Get pretty, get pretty big. And then from this stage, they will actually start to burrow in, down into the diet where they will continue growing, but they will become a pupae. We'll show you some pupae in just a second. You'll notice the larvae has actually burrowed down into the diet and it is, it has pupated. And so it's a pupa. And I can show you. A lot of people think they're dead when they look like this. But their wings are forming on the inside as well as the rest of them. So you can see them move a little bit. They are still alive. And when they get to this stage, when we have uh, the pupae, it usually takes them about seven to ten days, and the pupae, the moths will emerge out of the pupae. So these uh, were pupae that we just pulled yesterday. So this is a bunch of pupae. <laughs> they have little spiracles, little dots on the side, and that's actually, um, it helps them breathe whenever they get air flow through them. And then I'll show you some older pupae that have actually started to emerge. So in about a week, these will emerge into the, the butterfly, or moths will come out. Pupae that have emerged yeah. into moths. And you'll notice they're uh, different color than the older moths that we have because the scales, of course, that the more you handle and things like that, they, um, their scales will come off and it'll make them look like they've changed colors. Again, as I pointed out, you've got a dot here and one there. And you'll see some on the paper towels. And when they come out, their wings are kind of crumpled up a little bit, mm -hmm. and so they're allowed to dry, and then we'll go from here. The female moths usually emerge first. And it takes, I mean, they're just, you know, a day or two apart. These are But again, they are growing in there. Oh, you'll see some moving. So they're alive. These are, you know, living. They're not dead. It's just the stage that they're in. When they feed on cotton, it's the cotton bollworm. So it's the same insect, just depending on what they're feeding on. They have a different uh, common name. So these are the adults. They are moths. So one at a time. It's going to be quick because they will fly out. A couple. And as a distinct characteristics, if you will look at this, you'll see the two dots, one on each side of the wing. We made sugar water and honey water earlier. And this is in the cup. And I had mentioned, like, we kind of wig the candle wig. And so you can see that. So they will come up and actually feed. And that is how the moths feed there. These are our new moths. Those were fairly old. I should have got this a little bit better. Yeah. We generally keep about 30 to 40 moths in a gallon bucket. So all of these little dots that are on All here, of the dots the are the eggs. They lay sand. And they're kind of hard to see. Uh, but you try to help cut down um, any kind of bacteria anything like that we will soak these in a bleach water solution and wash them 
and then they go on a piece of filter paper and um, look at them. And I will show you the egg. This is a moth bucket. And we use wax paper. And you will see how they, these are all eggs. All these clusters are eggs that they have laid. And this is the top. That might be a little bit easier to get oh, a yeah. cluster of eggs. Where the fall army worms, they lay one egg at a time. The falls, they lay their eggs in clusters. So we right. can't take, <laughs> take them out and look. The nymphs do not have wings, so we can actually open those containers. Right. But if you notice here, that's an egg pack. They, the females are laying their eggs into that gel, and they will hatch from there. On this side, that's their food pack. They have piercing and sucking mouth parts, so they pierce into the plastic, suck out, and feed. Can you see those eggs? All those tiny little dots? All of those little bitty dots are eggs. And if you look at them under a microscope, they really look like the old timey long skinny balloons. They're long and narrow. Mm -hmm. And the top has a little lip. And that is the part that you're actually seeing here. And they do that on the plant too. They lay inside the plant tissue, but the top of the egg is actually exposed. It's not inside the plant. But when they hatch, of course, they come out that opening. So we take all of these egg packs, they're in there, but in the lab, they usually take about five days to start hatching in the field. They can take seven to 10 days. There are five nymphal instars for plant bugs. The first and the last instar takes about five days. They're the longest two. We shred paper because that gives them places to crawl around the nymphs do not have wings so they cannot fly so we have to put their food pack on the inside we have the piercing and sucking mouth parts as i said with the adults and that they are feeding on this food right here and we usually try to stretch that plastic they will continue to grow we do change their food and their egg packs three times a week and you will see up here they're continuing to grow and feed inside there And in the fifth end star, their wing pads start to develop. And so they're still fairly small. But you, if you can zoom in on those, you'll see like right, kind of maybe where you would think their shoulders, if they were people would be, you'll start to see where it's getting dark and that's where their wings are starting to form. They are not considered an adult until they actually have wings and then they can fly. Nice. Yep, so you'll see like at the third inch store, they'll get these little dots on their back. The older they get, they'll get a few more. Here you can see the five dots and the wing pads starting to form here. They also have uh, markings on their legs, on the underside of their, uh, maybe their belly area, their mm -hmm. abdomen. The antenna, their antennas and their legs, they're fairly long compared to the rest of their body.